Hey, Pro-Life Jen, I'm Kristen Hawkins. Welcome to this week's episode of How to Win This Week on Explicitly Pro-Life. I want to talk today about the hypocrisy of the extremist abortion advocates. Let's start with the biggest illustration out there right now. AOC Congresswoman Cortez goes to the Met Gala, which I think the tickets are like $35,000 to go. It's the kickoff of, I think, New York's Fashion Week or whatever, and wears this beautiful dress, uh, but the back of it's painted red, which I thought was interesting for her because she's always advocating for abortion, Um, but she also looked like a Chick-fil-A bag a little bit too, but it said tax the rich. So she's at an event with all rich people, uh, and she clearly had to have had rich people either giving her money to go to the Met, or she is getting money uh, illegally, and that would be an ethics violation to go to the Met, um, and wearing a dress saying tax the rich. It, the irony of it was just crazy, but this is what socialists do, right? Like, you know, make everybody else have crappy health care except for me. I mean, that's what Congress did, right? They exempted themselves from Obamacare when they they passed Obamacare because they knew it would be so crappy. But, you know, whatever. Um, I can talk about that forever, and but I won't. That's probably, I should do another episode. But AOC, she's crazy. She also attacked uh, the governor of Texas for his uh, quote, quote, ignorance as to who can menstruate because um, she believes trans men and non-binary the binary people can menstruate. Um, that really isn't a trick question. Either men can menstruate or women can menstruate, menstruate, or they both can menstruate. And we know that's not true. Only women have periods and can menstruate. So I don't even think we should have to be discussing this, but this is where we are. It's 2021. Uh, Kamala Harris, the vice president. Think about, let's think about what she's done lately. Oh, I know. Not said anything about what's happening in Afghanistan and the human rights atrocity that's currently unfolding in that country. Yes, the women's rights champion and the woman that all the pro-abortion advocates were crying over that she was now the vice president of the United States because she was going to be such a great champion for women was completely silent as the Taliban was rolling our equipment, the billions of dollars of U.S. taxpayer funded military equipment, rolling our equipment that we abandoned into Kabul to take away all the rights of women in Afghanistan. But don't worry, she made time to go to California and campaign for her longstanding friend, Gavin Newsom, Mr. Abortion Governor himself, who literally signed into law the bill that the previous Democrat pro-choice governor, Jerry Brown, had vetoed that now mandates that every state university in California dispense the chemical abortion pill on it. That whole election, that recall election was crazy. And, and Planned Parenthood was actually afraid Gavin Newsom would lose and was out there doing all they could to make sure that, you know, Californians knew abortion was on the line. if Gavin Newsom uh, was recalled, which I actually don't even think was it was a concern. But that's where the vice president was. That that was her priority. So the next time, um, you know, someone tells you that Kamala Harris and the Biden administration are all for women's rights. Yeah, except if you're a woman in Afghanistan. Sounds pretty racist to me. Uh, Nancy Pelosi uh, recently, I mean, this is crazy. Like, I could make this list go on all day. This is supposed to be short episodes. Uh, Nancy Pelosi recently talked about how, you know, the God had blessed her to have so many children. She was a mom of five kids in six years. Therefore, no man can ask her any question about her support for abortion in all nine months of pregnancy for, you know, no matter what and taxpayer funded. But yet she thinks that and she said, you know, she was, you know, for having babies, but other women should, you know, poor women should have the ability to kill their baby. Just think about that. It seems kind of elitist to me that you, Nancy Pelosi, who's a multi-millionaire, do you all remember when she like did that ice cream thing during COVID and everyone was saying she had like a $30,000 refrigerator or something crazy like that, who's only gotten richer every year that she stays in Congress, which seems like ethics violations there. It's good for her to have babies. She can have as many babies because she's rich. But the poor women in the country, they need abortion. They need taxpayer-funded abortion. I mean, this is the abortion industry. This is the leaders. These are the champions of abortion rights in our country. They're bigoted and elitist. This is who they are. 
absolutely sure they are. Okay, I will, f- I will finish this with Mr. Joe Biden, President Biden, Mr. Committed Catholic himself, who then proudly says he supports abortion all nine months, no matter, no matter what, and then says he goes to mass every week, which, by the way, Pope Francis just said, you can't justify abortion. It's hiring a hitman. So even Pope Francis, even Pope Francis came out strong against abortion. Joe Biden says that he's for women's right to choose, that he's personally against abortion and wouldn't, you know, tell his wife to have an abortion, but he's for women's right to choose, but he's not for your right to choose whether or not you wear a mask or get a vaccine and literally said, this is not about freedom or personal choice. It's about protecting yourself and those around you. Here's an idea, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Nancy Pelosi, AOC, just pretend that the unborn fetus, just pretend that the unborn fetus is your neighbor next to you on the plane. Just pretend. Because maybe then you'll care. Or let's pretend like the um, mothers are women who don't wear masks. Tell them you got to cover up, you got to protect yourself, and you have to protect others because that is what mothers do. Mothers are called to protect their children, their offspring. It's sort of natural. And let's end today's episode talking about President Joe Biden, Mr. Committed Catholic himself, who says he's so committed to his faith, he's very devout, yet openly supports abortion and wants every single American now to fund abortion. Not only does he say it, he actually wrote a budget that excludes the Hyde Amendment, which will force every American, even those who disagree with abortion, to, to have to fund abortion. And his own administration will force his own church to have to pay for abortion-causing drugs in employee health insurance plans for Catholic high schools, for churches, for hospitals, for others of his who share his faith, like Catholic nurses and doctors. He, his administration doesn't actually even think they have the right to say they don't want to be involved in abortion because the they have a religious objection to it. But Mr. Joe Biden, Mr. Pro-Choice Catholic, his craziness, let's think about a statement he just said. He just said, when talking about his mandates and how he's now forcing almost 100 million Americans to get vaccinated after he said he wouldn't do that. And you know, the question is, does, you know, do we live in a representative democracy? Or do we live in a dictatorship? That's a question now. Um, But he actually said, this is not about freedom or personal choice. It's about protecting yourself and those around you. That's a direct quote from the President of the United States. Hmm. I think we could say the same thing about abortion, Mr. President. It's about protecting those around you. That is why we're against abortion. It's about protecting these vulnerable, innocent, pre-born children. That's why we should be against abortion because every abortion kills them.